So this patient, one of the reasons we're considering a lapidus for her, not only the large IM angle, but also the amount of hypermobility. If you compare this, you see a lot of excursion and play. And I like to hold the midfoot and also just demonstrate isolating the first TMT joint. You can see she's very loose. So for someone like this, I like to start by looking at the tibialis anterior, following the course down, finding the first TMT joint. And there's a nice junction between the dorsal skin and the plantar skin. So I typically come right along this area. Gives me great access to the plantar side. This area hides an incision really well, typically heals great. Down around this area, if, if there's a large knot on the medial side, sometimes I'll take a little bit of the skin out, as it often is quite redundant here after the correction. So again, looking at our tibialis anterior tendon coming down in this region. Okay, so we're ready to make our incision. So I find when I first start my dissection, I like to find the metatarsal here. I know I'm safe right in this region. I'm away from the tibialis anterior, so I'll make an incision down to bone at the first metatarsal. One of the important things about the plantar lapidus procedure is being cognizant of the tibialis anterior tendon. So we can actually see this coming down. I'm going to reflect off the joint and start to expose the joint so we can prepare this. You can see the border of the tendon right here. So I can safely remove this to access the joint. So here we have the tendon coming down the tibialis anterior. There's the inferior border, the superior border. And I often do have to remove a small portion of the tendon itself off of the metatarsal. We know about 10% attaches to the metatarsal. And you can safely remove the portion from the metatarsal itself, but safely protecting the bulk majority of the insertion of the tibialis anterior right here. One more. And I use the power ass to snow shovel basically the articular surface off. Quick way to remove that articular cartilage. This gets great access to the plantar side of the joint. So I typically will also take the rasp and feather down the lateral side of the cuneiform. This helps with the reduction as you reduce the intermetatarsal angle. So I feel it's important to, uh, to prep the joint adequately. If we, the last thing we want is for this, of course, to go into a non-union. So this brings in some bone and allows some channels for, for bony ingrowth and uh, breaking up the subchondral bone. And then we'll use a little osteotome to fish scale this as well. So now we're putting allosync mixed with bone marrow aspirate into our fusion site to help facilitate bony healing. Yeah, so now I'm exposing the medial side of the first metatarsal. You don't always have to do this. She's got a large IM angle, so it's as far as reduction is concerned. I certainly want to be able to grab this structural bone here before I remove it. Okay, I like to place the K wire in the metatarsal itself. And that helps me with my reduction. On her preoperative axial view, she did have some valgus rotation of the metatarsal. So we're going to use this as a joystick to help reduce this back. And you can see by simply just taking this, you know, she's in a valgus position here. And when we rotate the metatarsal out, how it starts to disappear the medial eminence and all of a sudden starts to bring everything back into alignment. I also use a large clamp. And I place this on the second metatarsal. And I like to place it on the top of the first metatarsal if I can more towards the dorsal side. And that also helps me rotate this into a reduced position. I would caution you on taking the bump off. That softens the bone. So I like to leave the cortical bone as I do the reduction. And if you're going to take a bump off, I would do it at the end after this. Okay, so now I'm going to compress the joint. Manually eliciting the windlass mechanism helps to hold the metatarsal in the right position in good alignment with the lesser metatarsals. Good. I'll usually take the joystick K-wire as well. I try to position this so that it's angled towards the second metatarsal. And I can also throw this into the second metatarsal for additional stability while we fixate. Yeah, I am angle. Sesamoids look good. K-wire, yep, we're in good shape. Okay, so we're going to first look at how our plate is positioned. And it looks good. I can tell that there is a little bit of a prominence on the plantar side of this joint. And we're going to just rasp that down a little bit. I'm just going to use this rasp just to flatten out the plantar surface a little bit. And I have to do this maybe 10% 10, 10 of the time.
So as we look here, here's our arthrodesis site. We've protected our tibialis anterior right here. The plate is not on the, the tendon at all. It's well planter. As far as mechanics go, I prefer to place a non-locking screw first on the planter surface. Then we'll take the BB tack out and put in a locking screw here. And in looking at this, I can see the most proximal hole is not too close to the joint. I can see the hole next up distal, which has the BB tack, uh, is not too close to the fusion site, so we're well centered within the cuneiform. Even though this is a non-locking screw, I find it's easier to put the locking guide in. So a 22. Yeah, let's put in a 20. Very nice. Let's take our BB tack out. And then we're ready to do our drill for the compression screw. So when you're placing the compression screw, seat this in the compression hole within the plate. And as far as angling this, uh, you know, you want to shoot somewhat towards the navicular cuneiform joint. I like to come out just above the NC joint. I also like to stay in the medial cuneiform if you can. So I like to shoot for basically the uh, proximal aspect of the cuneiform on the lateral side in that corner. So the superior proximal lateral aspect is the landmark that I'm shooting for. I'll often insert a little K-wire just to keep my angle as I get ready to do the over drills. And again, this is, this is simply just for the first metatarsal, holding our angle, and we'll just do a couple of millimeters in, and that's all we have to do. We don't want to rob any purchase uh, of the foral screw in the medial cuneiform. Okay, so that's reading a 42. We're going to get maybe two of compression. I'd say let's put a 40 in, and if it ends up being too long, we can switch it out. But I'd say let's go with a 40. Okay, so as I advance the compression screw, I'll get right down close to the plate, but before the head starts to engage the plate itself, we'll stop, we'll take our BB tacks out, and we'll take our uh, temporary fixation pins out as well, so they don't block our, uh, our compression. So now we're ready to uh, compress the joint. So as the screw gets close to the plate itself, you'll start to see actual compression as this engages. And you see, I've got really good bite. Excellent. You could see some of the some of the bone marrow aspirate coming out as this compressed, and the plate advanced a couple millimeters. So we've got good compression now built in through the plate on the planter side of the joint. Very good. Now we'll just place our two locking screws, and we'll be done. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. Perfect. So we've got a nice planter position plate. Our sesamoids are good. So I'm testing the patient's range of motion. You can see she's got great range of motion. Despite even a small amount of arthritis on the x-ray, now it's back into its anatomical position with everything being realigned, the intermetatarsal angle. But excellent dorsiflexion, probably about 60 to 70 degrees dorsiflexion. And we have plenty of plantar flexion. When I hold her in the, uh, the corrected position here, I do see she has a little bit of redundancy of the medial soft tissue. So we'll go ahead and do a little capsule orphy here to tighten this up to balance the first metatarsal phalangeal joint. So you can just close this but they often fill in with some scar tissue and still seem that they have a bump. So I'll often do a little skin plasty and remove a segment of this as well, just being careful with that plantar medial nerve along this particular area. Okay. So this is jump start. This is uh, silver impregnated, has cathodes and anodes to stimulate the incision of the skin and uh, you can lay this over the top. You can go through the steries, a moist gauze, you can do hydrogel. I put a couple of uh, damp 4x4s over the top and then uh, regular dressing.